is DDS. We are your host, Blake Melton, Bradley Newberry, and joining us by phone, the man, Matthew Two-Tone Blue, Parker. Parker, tell me what's good, big guy. Just doing a little commuting, but you know, I do know one thing. I know the Titans will not be losing this weekend. Boom. I like, <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure. Newberry's over here dancing. Yeah, he's got, he's got a he's got a certain team's hat Everybody on. Everybody knows why that I'm may dancing. or may not have pulled a victory out. Maybe we we'll don't know. Disc- we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. The Jacksonville Jaguars caused chaos, and it was beautiful, Parker, this past weekend. Absolutely. But before we get started, guys, hey, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up button. Go ahead and hit that notification bell while you're down there for notifications on new videos, guys. Yeah, crazy weekend, right? It was. But before we get started on this super wild card weekend edition, Blake, what will be quenching our thirst today? So for our bod today, our beer of the day is brought to us by Odd Side Mayan Mocha Stout. Now this one looks interesting. Stout with coffee, cinnamon, nutmeg, and habaneros. What are we on a hot sauce review? I, I don't know. This one is not <laughs> a local beer. This is out of Grand Haven, Michigan, by the way. You know, we would have had a local beer, but, you know, nobody sent us anything this week. So, uh, actually, what it was is none of us went to the grocery store. But I don't whatever. know. We've been covered up with snow and ice. Exactly. So. All right. Here we go. Let's, let's, let's see what this, what kind of sound this has got. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, man. I don't know. Straight from Michigan. All right. Here we go. Ooh, that is a dark, heavy, thick-looking beer. I'm interested, guys, to hear how this is, because I have seen many of these mocha beers around, and I'm a beer drinker, and I have yet to actually ever try one. Well, we will review it right here. There you go. Let you have the rest there. All right. I'd side Mayan Mocha Stout. Keeping us quenched today. Parker... Give us just a moment to take the first sip before we jump in. Oh, no. Go for it. I'm drinking my water pretending it's it. Oh, that is interesting. Oh, boy. Okay. Yes, I taste it. I, Parker, a lot I taste of flavors. A, a lot of flavors going on there. A lot of sensations. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I like I'm on a hot sauce review. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Well, a lot of interest, flavors, reactions were had on Twitter about the Raiders Chargers game. As it was going down live, were you talking to my younger brother as this was happening? <laughs> I'm sure he had something yes. to say. Give us some of the breakdown, what you were hearing live from Brandon as the game was happening. Oh, well, it was uh, – so I texted him that, you know, hey, this is over. There's no way. This, this is not going to happen. He's like, no, Chargers are coming back. Chargers are coming back. I'm like, dude, they're not going to come back. It's not going to happen. And sure enough, man, fourth and 10, fourth and 15, fourth and whatever. It didn't I mean, matter. It didn't matter. No. Every single time. Uh, and, and all I kept getting back was, told you, told you, <laughs> told you. Yep. They, just, they just kept converting. This game should have been 29 to 15 or whatever the, the score was there for a bit. <laughs> um, unbelievable that this game went to overtime. And honestly, if it wasn't a conversion, it was a penalty. <laughs> I mean, it was new life every time. It, it, it was every single time. I don't know how the NFL does this. This year they did it with, you know, Tom Brady br- uh, breaking the touchdown record while he was back in Foxborough. All these things seem to seem scripted. You know, the oh. 272nd, the last game, it just ends perfectly. I, it, the NFL is just the luckiest league on the face of this scripted. earth. Scripted. They have these things. He oh. said scripted. I think oh. another Newberry at one point. Said that this league was nothing but scripted. I mean, it's it's been said many times, many ways, that the NFL is not much different than WWE and Vince McMahon. <laughs> Golly. Hey, I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers throwing his foot off the cameras. You got DUIs and people running over people. You've got people getting cut in the middle of the season. AB stripping down in the middle of a game. Oh, yeah. It, it kind, it's, it rea- kind of it's, reality. it's reality television is what it is. <laughs> this is great. By the way... <clears throat> This has got a kick, by the way. I think Parker would love my this throat. Beer. I've got a burning in the back of my throat right now. It's a good beer. Um, so I mean, the Chargers end up losing this game. What as the clock struck zero in overtime, everybody 
I can't say everybody, but I definitely was cheering for the tie. Um, but I think Carlson, right? Parker has never missed a kick in that stadium. Dude, he's, he's won. He's won three of the last four games. Have ended because of Carlson. I think he's made four this year. That only time expiring. Dude's money. There's a reason they paid him. He's really good. They, they, the one thing Raiders have usually had. They've had good kickers, good punters, and it continues. And with this, Herbert does not make the playoffs. There's a lot of media and fans alike questioning the coach for the Chargers. Some questionable timeout decisions. Other things. I. I, I came into this season saying that I wanted Trevor Lawrence to look like Justin Herbert. I don't think that I got any of that this year. A um, lot of weird circumstances in Duval, but uh, are you hearing anything about the coaching there? I mean, is it retained? Gone? So the, so the big issue with the coaching there is I, I listen to a lot of uh, analytical guys, and the coaching on third and fourth down there is phenomenal. As you can see, like they convert on third and fourth down. They live and die by that. So that was a lot of our analysis this year when they were playing against good third and fourth uh, down defense is why they were they were so bad because that's where they live and die. And first and second down, they're awful at play calling. And that's what a lot of the noise is, is why don't they call first and second like they do third and fourth? Uh, and that's the, the whole thing. But they've got a new coach. I mean, I think everything's going to be fine there. And Herbert. And I was down on him when they drafted him, and we talked about this at the beginning of the year, just how wrong I was on him last year. Continue to be wrong. This guy is he's, – he's, he is like the new superstar of this league. He is phenomenal. Man, he can sling it around, can he? He's just – I think you're right, though. I think that is the – that's the model for what uh, Trevor Lawrence needs to shoot for. I think that that's, that's kind of the mold he's cut from. Um, but – I I don't know. Maybe I'm old school, but there's this trend in the NFL this year that there's just no running game. I mean, and, well, and I and I feel like when you put every bit of the pass, every bit of the offense on the passing game, where you're going to say, "Hey, Justin Herbert, I know you're young. I know this is, you know, you're you're in the first few years of your career, but we need you to throw the ball 65 times this this in this game, and I need you to win uh, uh, so we can make something happen." I think that that's that's folly, personally. Got to take some and, more pressure off of them. And 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 people like me that that love the analytics like goo goo over the, over Staley. Like that's what he is. He's a he's a he's a analytically driven coach, which is awesome. But the guy has no feel. Like there's no. It's like he just looks at everything on a piece of paper and does not. There's there's got to be a little bit of human factor into it, which is a, what a lot of people have problems with. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I was wrong about the prediction. I said Raiders with a bum dead coach had a big fat loss looking at them. They win and they get in. They they make it all the way to the fifth seed. <clears throat> and I still don't think they'll keep the coach, Parker. I think it's – I literally yeah. had this conversation with your brother this morning. I think they have to. I, I don't oh, think they will. Well, okay. I don't think I don't think they will, I don't but I think, they sh- I think they should. I'm the same way. I totally agree. Uh, well, uh, if they win this, if they win this game, they keep him. How about that? Okay, a little on the on the line, but uh, oh, one hundred percent. If they if they win this playoff or this uh, wild card, super wild card, whatever it is, he's one hundred percent got to stay, right? Have to. We'll get there. Let's do some reactions on the hometown team. Let's Titans versus. Texans, Parker, you said on the prediction show, this won't be close. This won't be one of the games where it comes down to the last four minutes. And the Titans, I mean, they completely played one half of football and then just took their foot off the gas here. That That's exactly what happened. I mean, they're up 21 to nothing. Just I thought it was just going to be – I said curb stomping, and it should have been. It was up 21 to nothing. I literally – and I never flipped the games, but I thought, that's eh, done. Flipped it over. Let me watch some other stuff. It – if they continue to play like that, they win 42 to nothing, but they did. They just absolutely said, Hey, we're winning by three scores. Well, what do we care anymore? And it about bit them in the ass. It did. Yeah. Um, the mindset in getting to see, because the Titans have had a few times this has happened during the year where they've went up big and they kind of take their eye off the ball a little bit. Uh, it was the thing coming into this game that, 
I think most people were really worried about who are Titans fans. You know, are, even if they get up, are they going to take their eye off the ball? Because, I mean, let's not – I don't want to discredit Davis Mills. Dude, he's – I think he's the real deal. I think he is too. I mean, he kind of scares me a little bit, honestly, because, dude, he throws a good ball. He, he stands in there. I mean – if you know he wasn't playing for a train wreck of an organization at the moment, I'd be really scared. But uh, I mean, for the most part, I, I look. I know that the game was a little bit suspenseful, but I wasn't really all that worried about it, and I don't think anybody on the Titans sideline was that worried about it. Uh, it wasn't any one thing. I mean, it's just I think it's for, for. I mean, like we said, they kind of took the third quarter off. Do you think much. all all of Nashville stood up and gave a little golf clap? Whenever Julio Jones got into the end zone. I think everybody in, in Nashville uh, could care. We, we're like not finally in, we're golf not, clap for I, Julio. I, I don't think we're that enamored with, with the legend of Julio. <laughs> Just because the star of A.J. Brown shines so brightly in Music City. And, and forget them. The star of this game was freaking Tannehill. Four touchdowns, 290 yards yep. passing. When he was, should have got sacked on that third down, evaded the sack oh. somehow magically, made that pass, he won that game. Yeah, Danny he Hill won this game, and he was absolutely fantastic in it. Yeah, I, I loved seeing that. And and to be honest with you, this may sound stupid, but he threw it to Westbrook Aquina. Yes. And those are the balls that he drops in the past. Just those, those wide-open little – Hits him in the chest plate and he drops it. So yep. <laughs> hats off to to him too for actually freaking catching and catching that because <laughs> I I mean because I saw that happen I was like dude there's gonna be a guy standing right there just waiting and of course there was and it was freaking Nick Westbrook's you know, and, and and I was like please catch it please catch it please catch it but uh, yeah um, it's a win guys I mean and. It's, it's- it's a, it's a whole nother week. Seed. That's right. I was going to say not only a win, but it's the number one seed. It's a buy. It gives two weeks to give Derrick Henry a chance. Yep. To get back. The King will return. I mean, I've, if I could bet a dollar on him in DraftKings, I would. I think he's back. Oh, th- th- dude, he was uh-huh. back this last weekend. He just, there was no reason. If Deontay yeah, if Foreman I, and, and 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 if Hilliard were if Hilliard and Foreman were not playing well, he's playing in that game. I, I agree. If they, it, there was no reason to really play him because Foreman's been playing great. Also, there was no reason to play him. Yes, it was for number one seed, but this wasn't a win and end scenario, you know. Right. Um, so, Andy, you know, you need more time to get back from the century. Foreman's been playing really well, so you know what's the difference? Why risk him? I swear to God, man. I mean, you guys, between what you say, Parker, and sometimes what Blake says, give me the perfect transitions. Mm-hmm. I mean, he said this wasn't a win and in, but there was a game that we're going to talk about that was a win and in <laughs> scenario. I can't wait. When the Indianapolis Colts and Carson oh. Wentz brought his little show down to Duval, and uh, Parker tried to tell us, man. I, I gave some quotes from the coach that sound like old coach was scared. But I didn't have the cojones to pick the Jaguars coming off of an eight-game losing streak. And dare I say, because I watched every snap, the Jacksonville Jaguars on both, Parker, the offensive line and defensive line, completely outplayed and outpowered the Colts in both facets when, when all we hear is, oh, the Colts' offensive line is top three and – the defensive line, and then you have your linebacker with Leonard. I mean, that's a top 10 defense. They were completely bullied out there. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills every time I talk to somebody about the Colts because they're getting these Super Bowl picks and this stuff. Yo, I've been saying it for weeks. The Colts suck. I don't understand. Wentz is one of the three worst quarterbacks in the league. He is awful. <laughs> like, think about this. The Colts, the Colts last year – Went to the playoffs, won 11 games, had a worse roster, and had an aging Phillip Rivers at the quarterback position. This year, they upgrade talent around them. They get their receivers back healthy. Offensive line gets healthy. What's the one thing they change? Wentz. He makes them worse. Guess where Wentz came from last year? The Eagles. Eagles last year didn't make the playoffs. No Wentz this year. Guess what? They're in the playoffs. Wentz sucks. I don't want to hear it anymore. He's done. 
that was Boom. a Parker's power bomb. Jeez. It says here that Carson Wentz was sacked six times. He was. They brought And the, turned the he, ball over twice. I mean, against a defense that didn't show any of this, Parker, all year. Josh Allen steps up. <clears throat> Smoot. Uh, I mean, Wilson and Jack are flying around. I mean, Wilson gets a sack, strip fumble, a pick. I mean, he's stuffing the scoreboard thanks to Wentz, but I mean, run the ball Colts. God dang. I mean, that's what we were saying here. Keep it simple. Run the ball. Uh, Jonathan Taylor still averaged over five yards a carry, but you put the ball in Wentz's hands and this is what happens. You, it doesn't make any sense. I, it just, it's terrible coaching. People talk about Frank Wright being the best, one of the best coaches in the league. They talk about Ballard being one of the best GMs in the league. I got news for you together. They're 42 and 40 as GM and coach. Uh, this loss, I mean, they had – this loss sets them back big time. I, I mean, they thought they had an answer with quarterback. And you have to just go beat the lowly Jags. And not only do you lose to them. I mean, it's not even cl- – it's not even Dude, close. Dude, they went down to Duval and laid a giant shit burger is what they did. That sucked. <laughs> it's – Wentz, it said he was 17 and 29 for 185. And apparently his, his – I guess he had a garbage time inter, inter, or, or touchdown. So, I mean, that nothing, means, so that means nothing that, it, that he did mattered. That's what I'm saying. So it really was actually, I mean, PFF probably had a heyday with, you know, with the, the stats on him. Yes. I mean, good God almighty. I mean, like you said, he is, he is, he is the caked up gunk on the bottom of the barrel. As far as I'm concerned mm. with quarterbacks in the NFL. And, he does the <clears throat> most insane turnovers I've ever seen. We talked about this in the preview show last time they played Jackson only lost by six points and Trevor Lawrence was, I believe 17 of 35 in that game for like 150 yards. All he had to do was do a little better and they win this game. And that's exactly what happened. Well, he did more than a little bit better. He actually looked like a first round quarterback. Well, what he looked game. like, he looked like uh, this. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, Parker, that kind of looking at it, it looks like he had kind of a, a Ryan Tannehill game. He managed the game. He didn't throw for a ton of yards, but he protected the ball, completed the passes he needed to complete, spread the ball around. Did what he had to do to win. I, I completely agree. And the defense stepped up. You know, he didn't have to go out and sling it for 500 yards. Yeah. The played well. They played complimentary football against a team that came in uh, that was supposed to honestly be. It was a 16 handy. point line in that it game. It was. Yeah. And, he, and now the Colts have still not won against the Jaguars yeah. away from Indy since 2013 14. Now whatever. there is more mystique being built around that. You realize that, right? Now there's now there's an even bigger mm. mystique being built. Now there's a rival. Th- this is the beginnings of a of a rivalry, even though they are they're already kind of rivals. They're in the, the same division, but I mean the fact that they can't win in Duval, even when Duval is not at it, at its best. I mean, there's there's a story building there. They I watched last night the last hard knocks the end season of the Colts, and it was absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And Frank Wright brought that up in the meeting beforehand. He goes, I'm sure some of y'all have seen it in the media. I just want to let you know, we, we, we go down there and we lose since 2014. And he goes, and, and just want to let you know, we can lose again. Uh, so it, it's def, it's definitely on their mind. And watching that show, I think it made me feel like the Colts with, I don't know, I never realized with uh, Frank Wright was, I feel like, you know, have you ever been, you've been to those corporate meetings where you feel like you're it's just pointless waste of time. And they've got some big PowerPoint on the wall that no one's paying attention to. All his meetings in that show feel like that. They've got like a big mountain in the background, and he's talking about how to climb the mountain. And and I don't know. I just was watching it. I made a comment to my wife. I'm like, this just feels like a. I feel like I'm in a corporate meeting where no one's paying attention. A lot well, of rah rah stuff is what it sounds like. They were getting close to the top of the mountain, and then the big. Abominable snowman and the Jacksonville Jaguars knocked them right down. <laughs> oh, golly. Gee. Oh, God. Goodbye, Colts. That, so that God, it makes me so happy. It really I mean, does. it's terrible. Oh, oh, one other note before we set up the playoffs. Um, Trevor Lawrence was asked about Marvin Jones Jr. and his uh five hundred thousand dollar bonus incentive if he had seventy or more catches on the season. And he's like, he was laughing. He said, oh, yeah, Marvin and I discussed this before the game. I was going to get him his. And it happened. <laughs> I mean, he went to Marvin early and often, and it worked. 
I love those things. I know they talk yeah. about them in every game. I think they're fun. It's just real. I mean, they know. It said also they that Smoot got a $250,000 incentive bonus by reaching six sacks. Nice. He said, my wife, she told me, don't come home if I don't get the sack. So I'm coming home with it. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, that's that's a lunch pail dude. I mean, he's not going to be the one that you're going to see on yeah. ESPN or whatever about – yeah. Oh, Pro Bowl this, Pro Bowl that. But that's a steady Eddie guy that uh, you just you know what he's going to do. He does his job and keeps quiet. Well, and I love hearing about how players do what they're what they're being hired to do. Quite frankly, play football, play you ball. Know, well. Whenever you do what your goal is, you get paid more. Mm-hmm. I love the meritocracy in there. And I love the sack ones too because, I mean. They don't. The quarterback usually doesn't on the other team. Although Brett Favre did it for Michael Strahan, but they don't usually just give up and let the guy get a sack. Like with receivers, I can just force feed you the ball and you're going to get it. A sack, you got to go out and get it. You got to work. You got to work. work. Yeah. So uh, these teams put in some work. Let's stay in the AFC first, shall we? The number one. We've already touched on them. Number one seed, earned by the Tennessee Titans, and then we have a matchup. <laughs> On this super wild card weekend of the number two seeded Kansas City Chiefs versus the team that gets in thanks to no tie, the number seven seed Pittsburgh Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger, extending his career. Parker, is this the worst seventh seed possible? Yeah, it's awful. This is why there needed to be a tie. This is just this game. The Chargers are better than the Steelers. They, they, the Steelers, Big Ben is the definition of a noodle arm. His, his average depth of target right now that he throws, you know, most like is four and a half yards. He cannot throw the ball downfield. The Chiefs are going to absolutely just, I mean, just steamroll this team. Um, only way they don't is some last year Big Ben juju magic. I, I don't know what would, how they would lose. I, Swear, I hope that they the Steelers win, though. I hope. I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. It scares me when a team like the Steelers sneaks in at the very end with a quarterback who's in his last year. They're they're, they're playing out of their ass. Uh, it it scares me whenever I see that because uh, it, it's you come into the playoffs expecting to play teams that are at a certain level and maybe it's just because i'm a titans fan and we tend to play down to the level of our competition um but it scares me that the steelers are still still hanging around i'm hoping that the chiefs take care of them honestly uh just because honestly i don't i don't want there to be a reason for the titans to play down to the level of 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 their competition so so here's why i want the Steelers to win. I want them to win because I, if for the Steelers to win, that means they played the most impossible, impeccable game plan. They did some crazy stuff that no one ever saw coming. They pulled out every stop they could possibly do. And for them to repeat that twice and to repeat that again next week, I feel would be impossible and that they would just unloaded the cannon to do whatever they could do for this game. I feel you. I mean, you'd rather have Steelers coming in Nashville than some something else random, but uh, whatever. This, this bring it. This line on DraftKings is begging, begging people to take the points in the Steelers. I'm with Parker on this. I think it's a blowout. Uh, the Chiefs, I think, are lucky that they're not looking at a team like Baltimore. To be honest with you, I think mm-hmm. Baltimore would have given them bits. Yeah. Uh, hell, even, even the Chargers would have gotten healthy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even the Chargers would have given them fits. But this one's a seventeen point, twenty one point victory, and I'm not thinking twice about it. Wow. Okay. Chiefs. Uh, the next game. What is this? This is a uh, Parker. What's your you're, you yeah. calling the Chiefs on that I'll, one? I'll follow in Chiefs, but I would take the points with Pittsburgh. Oh, just you're taking I, the points. I do. Well, I do think Pittsburgh's down by like twenty eight in this game. And they just pull people at the end, and Big Ben gets two junk touchdowns at the end, and they cover. Whatever. I think this is a. I think this is a one score game. Ooh, but I hope. But it's going to be the Chiefs. All right. Uh, we have what is it? Uh, Saturday night, number three seed Buffalo versus number six seed New England Patriots. Uh, Mac Jones is. People are starting to get worried. I mean, look, folks, he's a rookie. 
He does rookie things. He hasn't done rookie things for the majority of the season, but I, this could be – we'll see what the weather does. This could be another yeah, low-scoring game. Just, yeah, I was just going to look it up because I've I'd heard it, that the, that the weather's going to play a, a role here. It the, It's not supposed to be windy, but it's supposed to be three degrees. It's in Foxborough, right? No. No. Buffalo. It's in Buffalo, it's in Buffalo? and it's supposed to be Buffalo. one of the coldest games ever. Three degrees actual temperature. I think they can still play some football as long as the wind's not messing with them. Three, the last two. I one. saw it wasn't the wind. Uh, initial thoughts are, I mean, most people would lean home team here. I say be careful. I mean, you've got – there's some coaching juju going on here with the New England Patriots, and uh, I don't think it's just a a shoe win that the Bills are going to win here, Parker. I, I don't either. This You know, this weekend, the Super Wild Card weekend, is a, is a game of rematches. Every game this week is a rematch except for one. And these two teams played each other twice, and they've split that. Uh, Bill Belichick, I mean, we know they, they're going to have a coaching advantage. I, I think this game, I'm not going to give you my pick yet, but I think it's going to be way closer than what people think. And I read an interesting article, which blew my mind. I did not know this. By the way, get ready for a prop bet for uh, Josh Allen over his 39 and a half yards rushing because I read that he has like poor circulation in his feet. And when he gets cold, he loses feeling in them. Ooh. So he actually likes to run early in these really cold games because it gets his circulation going and it keeps him from losing that feeling. So I just thought that was an interesting kind of side prop on that. Yeah, that's uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, part uh, Blake's favorite rookie this year has – I think has been Mac Jones. I mean, yeah. do you lean that way here or is it just the home team and too much with Buffalo? Um, that says I all, don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of confidence that the bills are going to be able to get it done. I'm just going to say that. Hmm. Uh, I just don't. Um, I think the weather could actually play a little bit more of a role in things than everybody thinks, uh, because with single digit temperatures, it doesn't have to be very much wind for it to make a difference. Uh, you mentioned the running thing. I think that 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 could weigh very heavily on my decision on who I pick to win this game. Um, that and I, I just, as the season has gone on, I just don't know that I'm a believer that Josh Allen is going to be the guy that's going to lead the Bills back to the promised land. I just don't. I just, I mean, I don't know why. Uh, I just don't get that feeling. Uh, I feel like Mac Jones is, has stepped into a system that really suits him very well. It's very, it's very Nick Saban-esque. You know, he, he's in there playing his role. And uh, we're going to see what happens. I think this is going to be a really close game. I really do. All right, Parker, here's my pick. I'm going New England Plus four and a half. I'll sprinkle some money on the money line. I think the Patriots win 27 to 20. I think they win by seven, but I'll take both the points and the money line, a little sprinkle. I got to say, I'm following you on this. I I believe in the Patriots. I think they're going to try to run the ball, keep it away, keep it away from Josh Allen and – Blake's right. Josh Allen, we talked about this in an earlier podcast. He's regressed a little bit this year. I know he's had still a phenomenal year, but he hadn't had what he did last year. The only thing that makes me think Bills is this crowd is going to be nuts. It, it, the Bills finally got a home playoff game last year and nobody was there. And then now this year they're bringing out everybody. They're bringing, out all, bringing back all the guys, you know, all the old players. And it is going to be – Bills Mafia is going to be nuts and again – Kind of like Indy losing, nothing is going to make me happier to see the Bills Mafia lose at home. So, Patriots, I'm going to go 27-24. Okay. All right, all you Bills Mafia fans out there that follow us on Instagram and Twitter, you go ahead and hit us up and tell us what you think about that pick. Uh, but, yeah, I'm actually I'm right in line with you guys. Uh, I think this is going to be the Patriots. I think it's going to actually be a low-scoring game. I'm gonna say that this is going to be uh, this is gonna be a, a, a thirteen to ten victory by the Patriots. 
Nice. Good baby. You know what, though? At least Bill Mafia will be able to be warm from burning all their crap in the parking lot. <laughs> Good grief. Jump through some tables. Whatever. You heard it. You heard him, <laughs> Bill's Mafia. Y'all, y'all let us know what you think there. And then the last game in the AFC pits the number four Cincinnati Bengals versus the number five seed Las Vegas Raiders. Dead coach walking with Jeez. the Raiders. They're going straight into Cincinnati. Blake's favorite state of Ohio. Uh, the Bengals should be rested here. Burrow didn't yeah. play. Mixon's coming off his coughing episode. Uh, is, is there anybody got any arguments for the Raiders here? Because I don't. No, because I don't think the Raiders should be there in the first place. I, I, I've, I got one for you. Uh, they have a really good pass rush. And Burrow's not the greatest when he's getting uh, – I mean, who is? But when he's getting slung to the ground, he's not the best under a blitz. And uh, – Raiders are one of the best teams in football getting natural pressure. So that would be the reason that I think that they could maybe win this game. Too many weapons, too many weapons, too many weapons. That's all I'm going to say. It's going to be the Bengals. They're going to win by 10 points. Uh, The line's hovering around, what, five? I think earlier in the week it was maybe seven to six. Um Yeah, I, from seven to five. Yeah, I'm going Cincinnati minus five. I'm going to add a little Joe Mixon receiving yards prop. Man. Just in case that the pressure comes, Parker. Maybe some flares or dump offs to Mixon. And uh, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Cincinnati like 23 16. It might be a one score game, but. Uh, I think it's too much for the Raiders. I let, let me give you. So the thing that I really don't like about the Raiders is the Raiders played the last game. They went to overtime on Sunday. They were playing until 11 something at night. Now they get to go cross country and play on a Saturday afternoons. So they have a major disadvantage there. I, I do think that they're playing for this walking dead coach though. There was a great <laughs> little, uh, they, they love this guy. They really do. I mean, th- there's cameras that caught him on the sideline talking to the coach, telling him how great of a job he's doing in the last game. They also Cincinnati. I'll say, sit here and say that even though the, they're, they're the four seed, they have one of the worst coaches in football and he himself could screw this game up and lose it. <laughs> that, that's how bad he is. They also benched burrow. This is, so he's going to come into this, not benched him, but sat him. He got banged up. So we really don't know how healthy he is. And is he going to come in this game and be a little rusty since he hasn't played all that much? And Carr is playing really well right now. I think that this is the best game of the entire weekend. Hmm. And I think that Waller's finally going to be healthy. Renfro is going to feast in this game. And they're going to get pressure on Burrow, natural pressure. So they're going to be able to double team Chase and Higgins. And I think the Raiders are going to win this game. Nice. Woo-wee. All right. All right. The state of Ohio, I'm with stand your, up. With your, I'm watching with your brother. So let's just hope for that second. <laughs> yeah. We'll flip it to the NFC. The Green Bay Packers have earned the bye in the number one seed. We talked about it, Parker, that this Aaron Rodgers thing will go one of two ways. Either he's going to just lay down and just kill the Packers season, or he's going to give the middle finger and ball. But now there's tweets and rumors that maybe he just doesn't even play in the playoffs. Have you heard this? He is the most dramatic queen I've ever seen. I don't think Blake had heard that, that that he's threatening not to play in the playoffs. (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm. I love Aaron Rodgers as a player. He's fantastic to watch. But once he's not on the, you know, I, you hear about people all the time that are like, "Hey, just shut up and pl- play ball or do what you're supposed." Aaron Rodgers, just shut up and play ball. Like I'm tired of seeing him on the Pat McAfee show. I'm tired of hearing all these rumors. He's going to end up signing with the Packers. All this is going to be for naught. He's going to play there again next year. Like, why see. wouldn't you? And. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just. I'm just tired of hearing. I stand Aaron corrected. Rodgers. It's not playoffs. <laughs> Blake just pulled up the article if you want to. It's the Super Bowl. Yep. Yeah, From on3.com, Aaron Rodgers could threaten Super Bowl boycott. He's not going to do that. There's just nothing Jeez, to do that. Jeez, okay. And it's all centered around all the COVID stuff. But the cough? <clears throat> well, just how he's the been treated. Sniffles? Basically, he's saying how, how he's been treated, I guess. Ah, uh, man, I don't. What, by making forty by making forty million dollars a year and being one of the most 
recognize his faces in America. I mean, <laughs> this guy is just so full of himself. So it blows my mind. He's saying they're saying that he will threaten the NFL by saying he will he won't play in the big game or next season if they don't eliminate some of the COVID related rules. Uh oh, it's getting political. Yeah, good God, man. You know what? They got he, Jordan Love right behind him. <laughs> he's going to end up playing himself off any team. Is what he's going to end up doing uh, if he just keeps it up. I don't care how good you are. Eventually, you, you Antonio Brown yourself. I don't it, know. Just, Vegas, they'll take anybody. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, number two seed. I mean, you said Antonio Brown. The Tampa Bay Bucks find themselves at the new number two seed. They are hosting the number seven seed Philadelphia Eagles. I thought maybe they'd win four games this year with their 18 running backs led by Hertz uh, with no quarterback other than Minshew. Uh, Eagles here are like an eight point underdog. There's some people saying the Eagles are going to give Tom Brady uh, a little matchup here. Do you believe it? Not for a second, not for a freaking second. Uh, I don't have anything to go by here, but I don't think eight points is enough. I'm calling this is this is a this is a two touchdown, cunny thumping. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the Eagles do have a better quarterback this year, so there is that. Um, <laughs> can't help with my <laughs> Carson Wentz shots every now and then, but. <laughs> I think they win this game. The only thing that goes in the Eagles' favor is they're talking like 30, 40 mile per hour win for this game. Oh, and, good God. And a wind they off are the running, seas. They are a running team. I mean, they are. if they are super, you know, if they're really good, you know, I'll put up some numbers on the ground against them. I know the Bucks are an excellent run defense. But if, if Jalen Hurts can, can go wild on the ground, there's a chance. But I, I just, there's. Tom Brady and the Bucks, they are just a different team at home. And I don't see them losing this. Yeah. I, I would I would probably take the points, but I but I would definitely take the Bucks to win. So I'm thinking uh I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will win, but I'm not touching this game with a ten foot pole <laughs> when it comes to betting any money on it. I'm staying away and I'll take the Bucks to win. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna win. It's gonna be a two possession win. Or two uh two score win, excuse me. The uh this next one though is what the majority is thinking maybe the most fun or the best game of the weekend. Number three, Dallas Cowboys playing host to the number six, San Francisco 49ers. This is the matchup that the media has circled as the, uh, the most fun Parker. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see why, uh, you know, Dax back in the playoffs, although since he's returned since week nine from that injury, he hasn't looked like Dak, uh, 49ers capable of beating anybody and they're starting to get healthy. They're going to have Trent Williams or a left tackle back. So this is going to be a good, a good game. And I think this is a terrible matchup for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys are the one thing their defense is really bad at is stopping the run. And the one thing the 49ers are excellent at is running the football. And I think that the 49ers are going to run all over this team. And it's not just Elijah Mitchell, but you got to stop Debo Samuel yeah, from that, running the ball. That guy scares the living dickens out of me. He might be the most fun person to watch in the NFL right now. Yeah, I think he is. I mean, good grief. Where's he going to line up? What's he going to do? I mean, good grief. Yeah, yeah I. And, uh, and they, they also have a coaching advantage because McCarthy isn't, you know, isn't the most. Uh, what's the nice way of saying it? But the, the most inventive guy when it comes to offenses, and Kyle Shanahan has dreams about plays. I, I just think 49ers also, you pl- you you bet we've talked about this when we were doing picks. You take Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers when they're playing away from home. They suck at home. They're excellent on the road. You'd almost rather be playing them in San Francisco than you would in Dallas. Yeah, um, this one, you know, I live in a, a Dallas Cowboy. Uh, uh, I live with a Dallas Cowboy fan, so. Yeah. Um, but I tell you, I agree with you. This is a horrible matchup. This is a horrible matchup for Uh-oh. them. Um, you know, Gallup being out. Yeah, Cedric Wilson's stepping up a little bit, but I mean, Dak just—he's just not quite been. 
very dackish since he came back. And I just... Pollard's been really good this year. Um, Zeke, I don't know. Not not been a very Zeke-ish year either. Not very Zika this year. But uh, but uh, they still have those offensive weapons. That's the big thing, though, that you got to watch out for. They still have those offensive weapons. Their defense, you know, if they try to throw the ball around on them, they're going to have some problems probably. But like you said, they the 49ers really – they want to pound the ball. They want to run the ball. They want to get Debo Samuel in, in motion. They want to get him moving up the field. And God knows what he where he'll line up or what formation he'll be in. Um, I, I, I think this is going to be, without a doubt, the most fun game to watch. I think that – I feel sorry for the Cowboys because I would rather – just the pure matchup for how they're having to play this team, I would think the Cowboys would fare better against the Packers. Like, that's how bad of a matchup I think this is against them. It just – it sucks that this is who they drew. Well, it, it never helps whenever Jerry Jones decides he's going to open his mouth and say stuff like, this is a Super Bowl or bust year. And I'm like – Oh, mm, that's a lot of pressure. Like, what the <clears throat> f- does that mean? I mean, is he going to blow it up? That's what I'm saying. You're going to fire everybody. You're going to get rid of everybody. It's stupid. Um, but anyways, I, I just, it's just the typical Dallas Cowboy story, right? They have a great year. They get to the playoffs and now they run into an opponent that might be better than they are. So we'll just have to see how this plays out. I didn't realize this, but y'all know the Cowboys haven't been to a conference championship since 1995. And this feels like a 90s game, doesn't it? 49ers it does. and Cowboys? And, and and the 49ers are notorious for just, you know, giving them the finger. I mean, Aikman versus Young? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, little Deion Sanders. Little yeah. Jerry Rice? Yeah. Little T.O. on the star? <laughs> And then coming and playing for it. <laughs> right. I, uh, golly, this game. Sounds like Blake's not as confident in old Diggs. What is he, the superstar cornerback in the league, Parker? I mean. Well, he's the number one. The, uh, the AP All Pro list just came out. He's the number one voted All Pro. But, you know, people look at those interceptions and, and nothing yeah, else. Yeah, I, uh. If they if they overload one side to stop the dual run threat of Debo and Elijah Mitchell, guess who they're going to slip out the backside? Kittle. Yep. It may be too much here. I I uh, I'm not betting this game. I'm, I'm going to stay away again. But uh, I could see either team winning. I maybe maybe a slight lean towards the home team. Twenty four twenty three. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's all we're seeing here with the line. Really, is home home field advantage. Yeah, I think that's all we're really seeing here. Um, I think that the other thing is, is Zerline has not been the Greg best. The leg. He has not been like automatic. Or I don't know if he ever really has in his career. But I was I was sitting here thinking, could it come down to a last minute field goal? And I'm like, I don't have a, I don't have confidence that Greg Zerline is going to be able to do that and pull it off. And it's for that reason that I'm going to be sleeping on the couch because I am picking the San Francisco 49ers oh. Oh. to win oh, no. on a last-second field goal. Listen, I got an extra bed, Blake. You just come on over, buddy. <laughs> so what's your your pick? Are you leaning San Fran? I. Uh... This is my favorite bet of the week. I would take the points in San Francisco and just put the house on it. Put the this is the mortgage pick. Wow. Just put put the points. Take the points for San Francisco because you're not even going to need them. San Francisco is going to win this game by ten points. Jeez. I think oh, this is going to be a 31-21 game. It's just that bad of a matchup. It is. In case it doesn't, in case it doesn't happen, take the points. Be safe. I do not see them losing this game by more than three, though. There you go. The last matchup in the NFC pits. The number four, Los Angeles Rams versus the number five, Arizona Cardinals. At one point, fellas, Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals were number one in all of NFL. They back into the playoffs somewhat. And now they're matched up against a team where in the NFC West, 
uh, prediction show, we're saying, hey, look, this is the team that they haven't beaten. They've got to get this monkey off their back. It's put up or shut up time here on a Monday night playoff edition game. It's the Rams minus four. Any initial thoughts? Don't, uh, I mean, yeah, you just said it. Cardinals can't beat the Rams. Their last 10 games are 8 1 and 1 against them. Uh, it just, the, the Cardinals are a sell team. They looked so hot at the beginning of the year, but they have been awful as of late. Uh, Kyler doesn't look that great. The running backs are hurt. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins isn't playing in this game. Rams get back Cam Akers, and of course Cooper Cup's just going nuts over everybody on the Cardinals because their best cornerback is not very good. Um, JJ Watt will be back though for the Cardinals. It looks like so that's a that's a big deal for them. Uh, the Cardinals are one of those teams when they're clicking, they could beat anybody. They could win the Super Bowl, but if they're not clicking, they could lose to the Texans. I agree. It's not a good thing because I, I think they're just one of these teams that peaked way too early. They peaked in the first, you know, five weeks of the season. And like you said, I mean, Kyler has not looked that great here lately. Um, I, I, I mean, but I mean, to Bradley's point, because I know he's going to bring it up. Matthew Stafford hasn't looked like all that in a bag of tater chips. Uh, but, uh, I will say that, uh, my confidence in him is higher than what I've seen lately out of Kyler. I mean, there's just things that Kyler's done lately that I'm like, what, what was that? You know, just some interceptions and some poor decisions, some really bad throws. He doesn't have some of the weapons that he, that he had at the beginning of the year. Uh, and just the matchups as a result of that, just don't, they don't really fall in their favor. So. For me, I'm going Rams. I think this is uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a touchdown game. I think they're gonna win by like seven points. Uh, it, it, to bring the Stafford point up, there's a few games he hasn't looked good in, but I, I think people are overlooking how good he's been. I mean, he's thrown for 4,800 yards, 41 touchdowns, and only 17 interceptions with 41 touchdowns. Uh, I know he's 0 three in the playoffs. Those were all with this team. I don't know if y'all have heard of them. They're out in Detroit. They're called the Lions. Hey, we're drinking some of Michigan's finest. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you, that's better than the NFL team that comes out of this state. Jeez. And and hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. They won this past week to yes, keep the did. Jaguars at the number one spot in the draft. <laughs> they did. That's the only way that win could have been better is if the Lions would have would have done what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I, got, I, got, I mean – it's no secret who my Super Bowl team is here, so I've got to stick with them for the for the time being. And uh, I just don't think the Cardinals are that great. I don't like the points. I would not lay that, but I would take the Rams to win. I'd probably say 27-23, but okay. uh, I, I, I could see it being a – it's either going to be a close Cardinals. I could see it going – I don't see the Cardinals blowing them out. I could see the Rams blowing them out, but I do think it's going to be a close game. All right, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking uh... – I'll look and see what the Kyler Murray rushing prop bet is. I am going to tease the line up to Arizona plus seven and a half. I think that uh, Arizona has enough here um, with Kyler Murray, Connor, Christian Kurt, Zach Ertz, old man, AJ green. I think they got enough to keep Ramsey, uh, on his toes. I mean, I, I love to see a chance at Ramsey to be pouting on the sidelines, maybe a little personal foul or two, but, uh, I say, hell, I might as well, let's just go Arizona 24, 21. Okay. But I'm not going to put any money on the money line. I'll put some, I'll probably tease it up to plus seven and a half. Wait, do you have Arizona in our picks? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> that's exactly, that's exactly what it is. I, no, unfortunately, I, I came in fifth and I didn't make the cut. But uh, yeah. 
But yeah, that's all. That's all I got. You want to talk about the Mayan mocha yeah, stout? Let's talk here. Odd side Mayan mocha stout. Stout with coffee, cinnamon, nutmeg, and habaneros. Let me tell you, Newberry, I can taste every single one of those. I definitely could taste the habaneros, Parker. I swear I, was, I, I thought I was on the hot sauce. So, Parker, for the, the coffee side, I know you were interested in that. I mean, yeah. it, you don't get a ton of the coffee. I think you get more of the cinnamon in the nutmeg than you do the coffee. Um, it's obviously a dark beer. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, this was very good. Very different. Uh, let's see what the back here. Inspired by Mexican. Is it, a, is it a heavy dark beer or is it just a dark beer? I think it's just a dark beer. I don't think it's very heavy. What do you think, Newberry? <laughs> Didn't taste heavy. No. It was just no. I think very flavorful. I mean, so, that's what surprised me about so it. So yeah, the back I here. Taste. I like reading the back of these 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 kinds of beers. Inspired by Mexican hot chocolate, it is carefully blended with Dutch chocolate, coffee, cinnamon, nutmeg, and habaneros, which will leave you with a perfect balance of chocolate and heat. So it's more about that mocha kind of taste, that that chocolatey heat that you get. And I think you get that. I think it's really good. I, now I'll be honest with you. I don't know that I could drink this that often, but this is this is kind of cool to have. I think every now and then, probably here in in the winter. I think it's probably pretty cool. Hot outside or Parker cold outside, like you can. Warm it's not one up that you want to just sit and drink all day, but no. it's a good it's a good beer. I think so. Odd side Mayan mocha stout. Let's see, they got a website. Yes, they do. Oddsideales.com out of Grand Haven, Michigan. Go check them out. Great beer here, guys. Boys, we've made it to the Super Wild Card Weekend. Lots I'm ready. Stuff. Lots of stuff going on here. I'm excited. But hey, guys, thanks for joining us today on this, our reaction and our pick show into the Super Wild Card Weekend. We invite you to check us out on Twitter at DDS Sports Talk. Uh, let us know what you think about uh, the picks that we made here. Some of them were a little controversial. I think that uh, Bill's Mafia might have something to say to Parker on there. Boys, final thoughts. The Bill's Mafia can't deny what's true, but the only thing I do wish is the Titans were kind of playing on Sunday because it'd be a home game and then maybe tinnitus of snow, and boy, would that be fun. Oh, boy. All of this was made possible no, no, Parker, he's pulling out the Duval flag. <laughs> By the Jacksonville oh Jaguars. My God. Until next season, Duval. I, I'm going to go ahead and cut the feed here. It's two-tone blue all the way. You guys be well. <laughs>